wow, we've just been in a collision, guys. Got a hole in the boat, a crack in the boat anyway, and a broken dagger board, and I don't know what else yet, but we just literally had a collision. Learning by Doing presents The Mad Dash. Watch us every Tuesday morning on YouTube. Join me and multiple crew members as I take our Crowley catamaran from Sydney, Australia, all the way up around the top to Lombok in Indonesia. Made possible by our patrons. Thank you very much, you guys, and also our sponsors here on board for this trip. Thanks so much, guys. You can also follow us along on Marine Traffic or Vessel Finder. Trade Runner is the name. This week's video is brought to you by AG1. AG1 is a comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition with 75 vitamins, minerals, and uh, whole food source ingredients made for just about everyone. I drink one of these every morning before I have my coffee or my breakfast. Just throw a bit of powder there and uh, in the water here, give it a good shake up. And uh, yeah, this starts off my day right. It's good for your gut health, good for your immune system, bit of energy. And you know, I'm coming from New Zealand. So is this stuff, it's made in New Zealand. Marie's not here at the moment. I don't eat as good as I should when Marie's not here cooking with me and for me. So this is, uh, this is my go-to to keep me healthy. to start it so if you sign up for a year's supply of AG1 using the link below you get five of these for free and a year's supply of vitamin D3 which is also a big bonus so yeah check out link below do yourself a favor yeah bit of added drama there sorry about that we just don't have any footage from the actual collision so yeah we did though have a collision we got slammed into by a, another catamaran that was not sailing uh, we were sailing, they were motoring, no one was on watch, autopilot. Uh, I saw them at the last minute as they came out of my blind spot and swerved and avoided a proper collision and they sort of slid down the side. Anyway, anyway, I'll get into more of this. <clears throat> well, I'm in Ely Beach right now, but I've been here for a couple of weeks dealing with all this stuff. There's a lot of... i got a little bit of footage that I can show you up here. But what I'm doing right now is leaving Ely Beach because I reached a settlement with the owners of the other boat yesterday and I have to keep moving. It's the Mad Dash, it's still on. I thought it might have been off. But we're two weeks behind now, but I'm going to keep pushing up to Lombok. Uh, so I'm pulling up the anchor right now. I've got no crew. I'm solo. It'll be my first solo overnight passage. I'm going to Magnetic Island. It's about 150 miles or something like that. It's, uh, I don't know, 1 p.m. or something now. I'm pulling up the anchor now. <coughs> and, um, yeah, going to sail through the night. So, yeah, first uh, overnight passage alone. And then the plan is to haul out up in Townsville and fix the damage to the boat, which will take another week and a half. But anyway, we'll get stuck into this video after I've got the anchor up and we've you know, got some sails and we're cruising out there and I'll fill you in and I'll catch you up on what's been going on lately. Sweet, that's the anchor up. I'm gonna wash my hands and uh, get her moving. That rock now sure does dig deep. We had some 30 knot gusts the other night, all night, and it was uh, held like a rock. Yeah. So I've motored out of the, the anchorage at this stage, got some free space around me, steered into the wind, and I'm motoring forwards at probably two, three knots with the autopilot on, which allows me to then uh, go up to the mast and pull the sail up. So you notice I've got the first reef in. I always do this when I'm, I'm leaving an anchorage when I don't know what the wind conditions are going to be like further out uh, out of the anchorage. Anchorages by nature are generally calm so when you get around a headland or something the wind off is, often is, is stronger than what it is in the anchorage so I'll go first reef and then when I get around the corner it's easier to let a reef out than it is to put one in. And then I drop the topping lift so I can pull the boom down and as you see I go into the cockpit and I do the main sheet up tight and then yeah it's off we go again. I've been to Ely many times and I love the place with Sundays. I've learned a lot about sailing there. This time I was more than happy to turn my back on the place 
this collision, dealing with the owners, trying to get a settlement uh, turned, was a bit of a nightmare. And I'm really, really happy to just turn my back on the place and get the hell out of Dodge. All right, guys, we are hustling along. We're an hour or so out of early now. Um, yeah, wing on wing, as you see, on a run. It might be like this all the time. Uh, this it looks like the wind's going to be up the butt the whole way along for this 150 mile leg. Um, yeah, as I said, I'm by myself this time. I'm quite looking forward to it. Uh, the reason for me by myself is that I've been in Airlie now a little while and I've not known from day to day, you know, what the plan is and when I'm leaving. So I haven't been able to have crew on board just because, when, you know, I can't ask when, I can't say when we're going to leave or when we're going to get there or anything. So anyway, but obviously I, I need to fill you in on some of these details. So what happened was, I'll go from the start. So. I rolled into Early Beach. Rich and Maddie joined me from New South Wales. They actually drove up, left their car in Early Beach. And the plan for them was to come to Cairns. And they really wanted to stay longer than that. But I said, to begin with, let's see how we go, get to Cairns, and then we'll talk about going further. You know, it just, you know, sometimes it works with crew and sometimes it doesn't. Anyway, so we spent the morning filling up the boat with water and uh, we went and did a massive shop because we're going to be, you know, 10, 12 days getting to Cairns. Um, we got on really good and it was a shitty weather day, foggy and raining and windy and, well not windy actually, it wasn't much wind at all, it was only about 10 knots, but it was bad visibility and, and it was a, a bit of an ugly sea state and it was just a shitty weather day. So we left early and we were just going to go out to Hook Island and wait there for the next day to then go north. So we motored out for about a mile or so, oh, out past Funnel Bay, and then we put up the the sails, there wasn't much wind, but you know, we weren't in a hurry, we had all day to do 12 miles or something. And then, yeah, we were cruising along for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes after that. And as I said, it was raining, it was shitty weather. We, all three of us were here in the cockpit and I was standing sort of here, looking this way, but I wasn't sitting in the seat. No, like, and you know, there was, we were walking backwards and forwards, looking at AIS on here. So we were keeping a watch, but we weren't, like, if it was sunny, I would have been sitting up here and had a better view, I will say that. But we were keeping a watch, and we were, you know, looking around through the windows and stuff. Anyway, we were talking, you know, like, we, you know, we were just met the first time. Anyway, I looked here, and we had the sails up, obviously, we had, you know, both sails up. And I, I saw a mast right in front of us, like, just right in front of us. And I was just like, shit, grab the wheel turned it like I got two turns in and we started turning and the next thing this boat bonk straight into us yeah like well along the bow if I hadn't have turned we would have just gone you know uh, scissor style and taken both the front beams out on both boats and both masts would have come down that would have been horrific but we as it is we did a glancing blow but my dagger board was up and that sticks out from the boat so that just got cleaned out and uh, they slid along the boat, like just slid along, and I was literally standing here, and as they went past, which is only three meters away, just there, I looked over, and there was eight people, or eight guests sitting in the cockpit, drinking coffee, and there was no one at the helm, and there was, you know, people sort of standing and sitting around, but there was no one at the helm, and they still hadn't even changed direction, even though we'd hit, you know, and I pulled over, Turned on the engines, we got the sails down, you can see here. So here's some footage I did get from right after the accident. I'll let it play raw, just so you can hear us, hear us talking the emotion in our voice. It could have been way worse. I saw them at the last minute. Yo, no. oh, oh, That's the thing with rain though. Yeah, it's lucky because if you've caught the inside of it, man. Oh, we'd be head on, we'd have oh. been sunk. Oh my god. Alright, I need to start this. What what did it break? Hey, mate, do you want me to turn this way? I was like, what the fuck is that? Yeah, yeah into the wind there. It's about right there, yeah. I don't know what damage that's got, but... 
I mean, we've got nothing structural. Yeah, it's stuck your brother. Is that your board? Is that Damage. Yeah, yeah. Board snapped in the hole in the front. Yeah, all it's done on the inside there, you can see where it's hitting, it's just you've just got like a crack right the way along. Yeah, but that's not all, that's like major. Yeah. <laughs> not like all that's happened, that's a really massive problem. That's structural. You've got to sand it all back, loads of fiberglass, fucking fucked. That's that's me not getting to lock on. Oh, oh. Ah. Well, I mean, I had to sign an NDA. I, I can't tell you what the name of that boat was, or the company, or even what type of boat it was. Apart from it was a, it was a sailing catamaran, a commercial sailing catamaran, but it had no sails up. He was motoring, and there was no one on watch, and there was an autopilot, I'm guessing, and uh, yeah, no one on watch. So we were. We were in the right as far as the law goes. We were sailing, no motors on. We were um, on watch. We could have been better on watch, so that's why I'm taking a bit of responsibility. Um, but I'm doing what I'm doing now. I'm watching through the windows, I'm looking around, and he was, he was in our blind spot, straight in front of us, behind the sails. But with my sails up, he should have seen us clearly, clear as a day. He had, yeah. Anyway, it was a bit of a shock. First initial thoughts were, well, what's, what's, you know, we ran downstairs, looked to see if there's any water coming in. I went up on the bows. Well, obviously we pulled the sails down first, got everything under control, got the engines on. And then we assessed the damage. Luckily, none of us even got thrown off our feet. It wasn't a big impact because it was a glancing blow. Um, we realized that there was a big long crack along the front and the dagger board was broken. I uh, motored over to them, made sure they were all good, got their berth number. They were heading back into early. And, um, yeah, just motored in, followed them in, basically. Uh, went and anchored outside. No other real damage along there. We can see all the stickers got peeled off. What's that scratch? Yeah. Oh, no, that's a bit of paint. I just can't believe that happened. Crazy. <laughs> went in with the dinghy, spoke to the captain, got the insurance details, all that sort of stuff. And just sort of like, well, they're in the wrong, we'll, we'll get this figured out. I was obviously bummed because A, yeah, any damage on my boat is just shit. And B, we're, we're on, you know, we're trying to get to Lombok and this just, I just knew deep inside, like, this won't be three days and we're on our way again, you know. Like, obviously the boat wasn't, you know, it was still seaworthy, but there's no way I'm going to leave until I've got this sorted out, you know. So anyway, I went to the next day and did a, a one hour long video report at the Mar Maritime Safety Queensland, which is like water police. Uh, I'm obliged to do that. I have to do that by law if there's a collision at sea. Because I am a recreational vessel, that's where I have to go. Uh, the other boat had to go to AMSA. I'm not sure what AMSA stands for, but probably Australian Maritime Safety Association. That's a pretty good guess, I guess. Uh, and they deal with all commercial shipping, so they had to go and do that. So. We had to wait a few days for all that to get cleared up and, and when that AMSA um, report came out and it showed them 90% wrong and me I had 10% blame which was I think was fair, that was about right. I could have even gone with 80-20 to be honest but 90-10. Uh, then the other party came straight to the table and we just settled out of court basically. Um, I would have had to, it would have taken ages to go through insurance. Um, they might not even wanted to, I might have had to take them to court and all that sort of stuff. It would have been shitty. and. But that would have meant sitting here for two months and just forgetting about getting to Lombok. And then you got the whole hassle of where do I leave the boat when I go to France and all this sort of stuff. So basically I, was, I did a costing of how much it's going to call, cost me to haul out in, in, in um, Townsville. I do a, did a costing per hour for a fiberglasser. Um, uh, basically I just did a rough costing of all the materials I'm going to need. And then I added a few thousand and I told them the figure and said, well, pay me this out now and I'll get out of your hair. We won't do anything with insurance. We'll just write this off, finished. And once the AMSA report came out um, and you know they really had no leg to stand on, 
they just ended up paying me out. So yesterday I got the money in my account and today I'm on my way to Townsville. Uh, so that's sort of like as short as I can make it. There was a few more details in there, but as I said, I can't really talk about the details, especially as far as their boat and their, their name and the skipper and all that sort of thing. The skipper was a straight up guy. He didn't lie about anything. Um, so, you know, that, that was cool. And it was pretty clear cut in the end, but it just took nearly two weeks for me to now be on the way. And because I didn't ever know when I was going to leave, I couldn't book a haul out in Townsville. So it's Thursday today. I'll be Friday, I'll be in Townsville, but then I can't haul out till Wednesday. And then I'll be on the hard for a week. At the same time I'm hauling out, I'll do the Andy Fowers and put new cutlass bearings in, which I would have needed to do anyway at some stage. I was thinking of doing that in Darwin if I had time. So at least this is sort of killing two birds with one stone and as far as that goes. So if I, I'm just looking, I'm keeping a watch here. I don't want to have another bloody collision. Anyway, um, yeah, that's the that's the collision. Well, a bit of a bit of a red mark on my record too, to be honest. I don't feel proud of it. I mean, obviously, Colreg say sailing versus motor, but also says every skipper has responsibility to um, hold watch, and and mainly every responsibility every skipper has a responsibility to avoid accident at all costs, regardless of who's coming from what direction. And um, well. I should have seen him earlier. I did avoid collision and the reaction I made avoided potential. I mean, imagine they had eight people in the cockpit. If their mast had come down, someone would have got injured, if not killed, you know, like a whole massive mast coming down. This this sort of thing is just smashing. You got eight people under it or 10, including their crew. So like, I feel good that I made that move, but I don't know, like, you know, if I'd have really been doing my job properly I would have seen them before that but then if that skipper who's got a lot more training and experience than me probably and definitely more training than me uh, he didn't see me at all even though I had sails up and I could see him you know I'm a massive target to see with sails up and he didn't see me until well he still was not at the helm station even after we'd hit I saw him not at the helm station so you know, we're both at fault, but obviously in terms of the law, I'm way less at fault. So anyway, I'll, I'll stop it there. Obviously, I'm going to film um, hauling out and doing this work. Obviously, it wasn't part of the mad dash, but now it'll be a mad dash to get that work done so I can then do the mad dash. And yes, I will be continuing with that. Uh, I don't have any crew lined up now. Obviously, this has thrown out all of the sequences of crew that I had lined up. Uh, everyone sort of had to cancel because people have to go back to work and that. And now I'm two weeks behind. So I'll end up about three and a half weeks behind schedule, but I feel like I can still make it to Lombok by the end of September. Uh, I'm going to keep going, it just means that I'm going to maybe do a few more overnighters and maybe stop a little bit less than I had planned. Um, probably some of you will think that's probably pretty irresponsible, but I've, I've sort of worked through it and um, looked at the distances and the places, you know, the, the legs where I can stop and I'm pretty sure I can do it but anyway don't worry I'm, I am being responsible um, and I hope I will be able to find more crew to come with me and ease the load a bit for when I'm doing overnighters but anyway um, yeah that's the uh, that's the sad story of the collision anyway I'm gonna walk forward now and show you the damage um, on the boat All right, so this is daggerboard, starboard daggerboard, and as you can see, got a bit of a wobble. And then up here at the front, it actually looks worse inside than outside, but uh, I'll show you this one. So yeah, that's there. Uh, that's that. So yeah, that'll be a bit of work fixing that uh, dagger board. Um, I'm not going to go into that now, because when we haul out, I'll tell you about that. I have done my research. I talked to the guy who actually built this boat. He gave me a lot of tips about how it was constructed, how I should fix it, all that sort of stuff. So I've got pretty good confidence that it'll work out, but I'll go more into that on another one. Um, we'll finish this video off with the rest of the sailing. Alright guys, we're hooning along, we're hooning along, 
we're sort of doing eights, nines, tens, elevens, even a twelve. Um, there's not really much wave action, but this, you know, it's behind us, so every now and again we we get lucky and just catch a little one. But that gives us an extra couple of knots. But I would say we're averaging probably eight and a half uh, knots. That's a beautiful evening. Alright, we're still ticking along. I've just cooked some dinner. Well, I just heated up. I made a big uh, pot of spaghetti with lots of vegetables and stuff in it about two days ago. Four meals I cooked for myself. As you saw on the chart plotter just now, well, more contacts that show up on the plotter now uh, at the parking spot up here, the coal, coal loading place. So each one of those contacts is probably a 900 foot ship, pretty massive. But I'm still um, 10 miles away really. It looks close on the plotter, but I'm zoomed out. So I've got time to have my dinner and um, yeah, it'll be another hour till we get there at this speed. So I'm um, just enjoying my dinner and poke my head out every now and then. Good morning, good morning. And what a beautiful morning it is. Wow, well, hardly a cloud in the sky to be honest. A little bit of a little rim around the horizon there, a little bit of mist, but um, well, what a stunner of a day. We're flying along at 7.2 knots right now in 9.4 knots of wind. Uh, we're on 60 degrees and I've got the screecher up, which is about the maximum with the screecher, to be honest. Uh, that's sort of hard up wind nearly, the screecher. Uh, we've got 24 miles to go to Maggie Island, Magnetic Island. Yeah, at this speed that'll be yeah three and a half hours or something. Boat's been amazingly well. I should I actually should put a dagger board down now. My one remaining dagger board. So stoked the boat's going well. So stoked to have done 120 miles north, uh, away from Early Beach. So good. Just you know, I know we're not going far and we're stopping again, but at least we've moved away from there. Things are looking up. So pulling up to Maggie Island time to get the sails down obviously when I'm by myself I've got to think about these processes beforehand when you got crew you can sort of just go da 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 and it's done but anyway with the screecher I've got to turn downwind with that um, let the pressure off it as much as possible and then as I came around the point into Magnetic Island worked out real well I'm heading straight up wind so pull the mainsail down put that in the bag make sure that's all good and then walk up the front and unclip the anchor chain get the snubber ready, throw the anchor off the front and yeah, then just drive in and find a, find a decent spot to uh, anchor and be safe. Cool, we're all anchored up here in Magnetic Island. Good stuff, there's a lot of boats, but I managed to find a nice spot here in between a few small ones. And uh, we're just pulling back on the anchor now and it seems to be dug in. Throw a neutral, turn her off. And we have arrived, beautiful. All right guys, that's the end of the video now. Thanks for watching, hope you um, enjoyed it. Obviously it's a passage video, but yeah, the whole explanation of the collision didn't really have any footage to go along with that obviously the tiny bit of footage I did have I'm not allowed to show um, and I was okay to sign the NDA to be honest just as long as I got the money to be able to fix the boat and get out of here without having to go to court and pay lawyers and then they get money and you know just I, I just hate everything to do with red tape so I took the money a lot of you'll probably say I probably didn't take enough but I definitely would have got a lot more out of it if I'd gone through the court system but yeah as I said I just don't want to do that so I took what I think is going to be enough and probably a tiny bit left over to, to, you know, if there's other things I find when I start sanding or whatever, there'll be enough. It'll make it happen. Anyway, um, yep, stoked to be a bit north now. Uh, Ten days from now we'll be on our way properly north and we'll just have to hook into it. But you guys will be along for the ride hopefully. Um, definitely you patrons are along for the ride and we're thankful for it. Very, very thankful. Um, yep. And, and, I, and I became aware, yeah, through France, exactly, um, you know, there's a few of you patrons there that aren't aware that we have a, a group chat for you patrons on the Signal app. So if you didn't know about that, well, just please get in touch. I'm happy to add everyone on there. There's about, I don't know, a third of the patrons are on there. 
and not everyone's obviously active but it's a it's a good way to keep up to date because the videos are obviously f are further behind you know so um patrons if you want to get on on this signal app just um basically you gotta send me your phone number and download the app and then i'll invite you and you accept the invite and bang you're in be like franz he's in We'll see you next week. Uh, next week, I will be going over to Townsville and hauling out. And there might be a couple of weeks of videos about that, the fixing. But I might just compress into one week because I don't really want to make videos too much when I'm working. But anyway, we'll see. That'll be next week's video. See you then, guys. Bye-bye.